It's unscathed, we're good. Hey everyone, it's Anna and I'm back with another vintage cookbook. This time I'm reviewing Better Homes and Gardens, Lunches and Brunches. And we have a great subtitle at the bottom, Luscious Lunches, Best Brunches. The cover of this also proclaims 125 recipes and 35 meal plans. And you know, I love a menu, I love a meal plan. This book was published in 1963 and I, you know, I have a special place in my heart for all of the Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks, but something about these earlier 60s versions, they just speak to me. The colors are so vibrant in these, everything looks different delicious because of it. Take a gander at this back cover. I think I'm gonna make this the wallpaper on my phone. <laughs> yes, I am gonna have ham on my phone. <laughs> when you get a color photograph, they do not disappoint. Brunches. Just look at that, that checkered tablecloth, ham, eggs. Is this like a breakfast picnic? Let's make breakfast picnics a thing. I absolutely love the name of this menu. <laughs> July Jubilee. The July Jubilee menu consists of party chicken salad, firecracker plums, strawberry ice cream meringues, and twist rolls. Here's another gem of a menu. Real cool cooking. Now I'm assuming that real cool cooking means like summertime, low heat, no heat kinds of recipes. No, this is a hot tomato appetizer. <laughs> Luscious fruit lunch. At the top of this menu, there's something called grilled bacon wrapped olives. And this makes me think of the Better Homes and Gardens holiday cookbook. There's something on the cover. This could be it. Oh my gosh, did we just solve a mystery? Look, bacon wrapped olives. My friend Tommy messaged me about this because he also has this cookbook. And we had a whole discussion about what is this on the cover because this does not appear in the book. We couldn't find it anywhere. I suspect that it is grilled bacon wrapped olives. Hold on to your hats. This menu might have the most amazing name in the entire book. Lady Fair. The Luncheon for Three Ladies, the After Shopping Special, and then Bridge Club Luncheon. Something in particular in this Lady Luncheon section that caught my eye, club sandwiches, which of course I know what a club sandwich is, but do they know what a club sandwich is? Because this consists of bread, seasoned mayonnaise, bologna, cucumber, Swiss cheese, mustard, lettuce, and then four more slices of whole wheat breads. I guess I have to look into the history of the club sandwich a little bit because when I think club sandwich, yeah, I think that like stacked colorful layered sandwich, but it's usually like ham, turkey, Swiss cheese, tomato, lettuce, etc. I've never seen one with bologna in it. Have you tried a club sandwich with bologna in it? I'm not saying it would be bad, but if this is how you eat your club sandwiches, please let me know in the comments down below. This headline, I tell you, star a swank souffle. I love that alliteration. This sounds like the menu for me. Cheese fans choice. Three cheese lasagna, crisp breadsticks, cucumber fingers and carrot strips, cauliflowerettes, fresh berries with cream and cinnamon crisp cookies. But I'm only seeing cheese in one dish here. Is that really what a cheese fan would choose? A real cheese fan? I'm gonna get a t-shirt that says, Real cheese fan. If I ever do merch, I promise we'll have a real cheese fan hat. Show off salads for lunch. This is just a dreamy setup to me. We've got what is clearly some sort of either polka dot awning or umbrella with the white fringe. I love those outdoor umbrellas that look like this. Color coordinated glasses and pitcher, blue table, coordinated salt and pepper shakers. This is entertaining. This is beautiful. I can only hope to come this close to something like this when I give a party. This is a showstopper to me. Lunchbox favorites. We've got our little grape juice in a glass bottle, pretty little cupcake. This lunchbox, it is not only plaid, but instead of being like a rectangular metal lunchbox, it's like rounded on the top. It looks like one of those suitcases. Actually, I have one of these suitcases. It was my grandma's. So this is said suitcase. <laughs> I remember my grandma carrying this everywhere. Like anytime she visited us, anytime she traveled. And when she passed away, it was the one thing that I really wanted just because of the good memories. So the lunch box favorites. I mean, they're not just for children. Executive on a diet. This menu consists of hot consomme sprinkled with bay leaf and thyme, cold turkey slices, hard cooked egg, crisp rye wafers, lettuce with low calorie dressing, a ripe juicy tomato, and hot tea. And then for a snack, you get a giant orange. Doesn't sound too bad. Next up we have styled for a career girl. 
chilled sliced fruit, cottage cheese, finger sandwiches filled with deviled ham, fresh ripe pear, jelly roll slice, cold milk, and then for a snack you get a bunch of grapes. If you're a career girl, you have to drink cold milk, but if you are an executive on a diet, you have to drink hot tea. I didn't make the rules. And then finally, in for teens. You know that I just go bananas when they talk about teens in these books. So this in menu includes submarine sandwiches. You're supposed to pack the filling separately, so meat, cheese, lettuce, and mustard. That's very smart. A dill pickle, fresh fruit, raisins, and chocolate milk. And then for a snack, you get a cupcake with grape juice. Actually, I think this photo is this menu for teens. No wonder they have such a groovy lunchbox. The name of this recipe really got me. Macaroni cheese toss. So the name is macaroni cheese toss, which is great, but the description is even better. A man's kind of salad, chock full of cheddar and tossed with tangy dressing. <laughs> Men and their macaroni salad. It's obvious I could probably go on all day about this cookbook, but I think it's time I get into the recipe that I'm gonna be preparing today. I'm very excited because this recipe comes from the Lady Fair menu. Today I'm going to be preparing herbed spinach bake. I can't say that I've had anything exactly like this. It's got rice, spinach, processed cheese, eggs, you know, butter, milk, onion. It's, it sounds kind of like a broccoli rice casserole, only the spinach has been swapped in. Unfortunately, I don't have any ladies coming over for the Bridge Club luncheon to share this with, but I think that'll be okay. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with this recipe, all of the ingredients and the directions will be in the description down below. Let's make some lady fare. <laughs> First things first, it says combined ingredients. So we have 10 ounces of frozen spinach. I've just thawed this and squeezed out most of the moisture. Today I am using a Fire King bowl in the Summerfield flowers pattern, if you're interested. One cup of cooked rice. I just made some minute rice really quick and used that. One cup shredded processed cheese. I never have luck shredding this. I've tried freezing it. I've put it in the food processor. It's just a mess. So I usually just cut it into little cubes like this. Oh, there it goes. One really stubborn little guy in there. There we go, got it. Two slightly beaten eggs. As you can see, these are not quite beaten yet. I've had a lot of bad luck lately with getting shells into my eggs. If you've watched any of my other recent videos, we'll try our best with these. Beaten eggs going in there now. Two tablespoons of soft butter or margarine. Confession, I melted mine a little bit. I'm sure it'll be fine. Third of a cup of milk. Get that butter smushed in there. I think it would have been better to use melted butter anyway. But what do I know? I'm not from Better Homes and Gardens. Who am I, Mary Blake? A tablespoon of minced dried onion. Half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. One teaspoon of salt. And a quarter teaspoon of crushed rosemary. That must be the herb in spinach herb bake. Just a tiny amount of rosemary. I've noticed in a lot of these older recipes, they don't use a lot of herbs and spices. So that was probably really something back then. It says to pour this mixture into a 10 inch by six inch by one and a half inch baking dish. I don't have one of those in my collection, but I am guessing that it is roughly two quarts. So this is what I'm gonna be using today. This is, what is this? What are you? This is a glass bake, Primrose Dream. These are pretty easy to find in the thrift store and I use this all the time. It's just a really nice size. Let's give that a nice smooth across the top. This is what it looks like right before you put it into the oven. And I am going to bake this at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. Hello, guess what I just did? I filmed an entire segment of my tasting of this dish and I forgot to turn my mic on. So these aren't gonna be fresh reactions. <laughs> However, I did wanna say I had to bake this for twice as long as the recipe stated. I originally had it in the oven for 25 minutes. I had to let this go for 50 minutes. You're supposed to let it bake until a knife inserted in the side and center comes out clean. And it was fine around the edges, but the center was still a little bit questionable. But 
I did taste it and it is done. So unfortunately, you missed my first taste test. I really, really like this dish. You can really, really taste the rosemary. I'm not really sure if that's exactly the right herb for this dish, but it is really delicious and I would definitely make this again. It smelled amazing while it was baking. The smell was kind of like nostalgic for me. It reminded me of a potluck, like your mom is making something for a potluck and it smells awesome and that's what this dish is. So I'm gonna finish this little bit that I have left. Hmm, highly recommend. I cooked a recipe from Better Homes and Gardens, Lunches and Brunches. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really hope you enjoy it because I do enjoy making them. I wanted to take a moment to talk about my fondue collaboration that is coming up very soon. On Thursday, February 10th, all you have to do is make fondue, film yourself making the fondue, upload your video on Thursday, February 10th with the hashtag Let's Fondue This. There's still time to join. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. I post content like this just about every week. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.